question states that you are given five processes in which these processes have their corresponding priorities and zero is the highest priority given to the processes and one is the lower priority as compared to zero then two then three and then four that means in out of all these processes p5 would have the least priority of four all right and we have to find out the average waiting time in millisecond of all these processes using preemptive priority scheduling algorithm so you are given the arrival times and the burst time as well as the priority so to find the average waiting time you first have to draw a gantt chart a gantt chart shows how processes will be executed as they arrive according to their priorities starting at from arrival time 0 since at 0 there is only one process p1 that is available here and the priority of the process is 2 so we start executing process p1 at point 0 this process continues to execute till another process comes in and that process is p4 p4 arrives at arrival time 2 and at that time we see what is the priority of p4 p4 has a priority of 1 since we know that 0 is the highest priority so 1 is a higher priority as compared to the current executing processes priority which is 2 P1 has a priority of two, which is lower than the priority of process P4. So we preempt P1 and start executing P4. Now, P1 executed for a period of two units. All right. So the remaining burst time of P1 would be seven units. All right. Now coming to P4. P4 will continue execution till another process arrives or its burst time is finished. But another process P2 arrives at arrival time five. P4 had a burst time of ten. Another process arrives at five, and we see the priority of process P2 is zero. That means the highest priority. So at five units, five time units, we preempt process P4 and we start executing process P2. Now. P4 executed for how much time? It started from two and it executed till five. That means three units. So the remaining time here is seven units for P4. P2 since it has the highest priority and a burst time of twenty eight, so it will execute to its completion. That means it will execute till time point thirty three units. Then by thirty three units, or when time is equal to thirty three, all the processes would have arrived. So now all these processes, the remaining processes apart from P two, because P two has finished, P one, P three, P four, P five would execute in their order of priorities. That means from highest priority to the lowest priority. After zero, highest priority is P four. P four has a remaining time of seven units. So P4 executes till 40 time units. After P4, next is P1. P1 has a remaining time of. Okay, so P1 executed for time period two. So total burst time was 11. So it has a remaining time of nine units. So it will execute from 40 to 49. Now. P1 after P1 the highest priority is of P3 the priority is 3 more than the priority of P5 so P3 would be executed till its completion that means till time period 51 because it has a burst time of 2 units and at the end P5 would be executed for unit 16 which is 67 now we'll from this gantt chart we'll find out the completion time of all these processes and then the turn around time and then the waiting time all right so completion time continuing this table like this completion time turn around time you must know the formula of turn around time turn around time is basically completion time minus the arrival time all right turn around time and then at the end the waiting time and from the waiting time of all the processes we'll find out the average waiting time right 
so the completion time of process p1 to find the completion time read from the right hand side p1 finished at 49 completion time of p2 33 then the completion time of p3 is 51 completion time of p4 is 40 and completion time of p5 is 67 turnaround time would be completion time minus arrival time so it would be 49 49 minus 0 is 49 33 minus 5 is 28 51 minus 12 is 39 then 40 minus 2, 38 and 67 minus 9 is 58. Alright, now the waiting time. Waiting time is turnaround time minus the burst time. Turnaround time minus the burst time. These are two formulas that you need to remember and you will be able to calculate the average waiting time. So turnaround time minus the burst time. Don't consider this 9. Consider the original burst time. 49 minus 11. It would be 38. Then 28 minus 28 0. 39 minus 2 is 37. 38 minus 10 is 28. And 58 minus 16 is 42. So the average waiting time would be the sum of all the waiting time divided by the total number of processes which is 5. 38 plus 0 plus 37 plus 28 plus 42 divided by 5. This would come out to be 145 divided by 5 and that is 29 millisecond. So that was an easy question on the preemptive priority scheduling algorithm. You just need to make a Gantt chart. From the Gantt chart, you need to find the completion time, turnaround time and the waiting time to find the corresponding average waiting time. In this question, you have to make sure what is the priority level given to you. Is it given that zero is considered as the highest priority or the vice versa? That means four is considered as the highest priority so accordingly you have to make the gantt chart so that's all for today's lecture so this question appeared in gate 2017 and it will be very useful if you understand the concept of deadlocked state using banker's algorithm i'll tell you a short way of solving this question so let's get started with it the question is the system shares nine tape drivers. The current allocation and maximum requirement of tape drivers for three processes are given to you, P1, P2, P3. Which of the following best describes the current state of the system? So the total uh, tape drivers that you are told are nine. Okay, total tape drivers are nine, which is given to you. And how many are allocated? The total allocated drivers are allocated drivers would be 3 plus 1 plus 3 which is 7. Okay. 3 plus 1 plus 3. Now we have to find out the need of each process. By need I mean that if this is the maximum requirement and these much of the tape drivers are allocated to each process respectively. So how much maximum tape drivers a process needs more to complete its execution. So if I calculate need of P1, need of P1 is its requirement minus its allocation which is equal to 4. Similarly, need of P2 is equal to its requirement 6 minus its allocation 1 which is 5 and need of P3 is equal to 5 minus 3 and it is equal to 2. So P3 requires 2 more tape drivers to complete its execution. P2 needs 5 more tape drivers and P1 needs 4 more. So if total are 9, allocated drivers are 7, so free tape drivers, currently the drivers that are not allocated are 
2 in okay so these are 9 minus 7 so if there are two non allocated or free tape drivers then we can use these tape drivers to allocate it to a process that needs two or less than two tape drivers to complete its execution and we can clearly see here that p3 is a process that needs two more resources or two more tape drivers to complete its execution so initially we allocate two allocate two tape drivers to p3 and after it has completed its execution it will return these allocated two tape drivers as well as those that were initially allocated to it so later on completion it will return p3 would return 3 plus 2 that means 5 tape drivers okay now how many tape drivers are free with us after completion of p3 free tape drivers that we have are 5 in nature 5 in number so we can allocate 5 tape drivers to either p2 because p2 needs 5 more for completion or we can allocate it to p1 as in where as you choose you can choose any out of p1 and p2 i'm choosing p2 so i allocate now the required five tape drivers to p2 and later when p2 completes it returns to me these five tape drivers plus the initial one that was allocated to it so it returns six tape drivers after it has completed okay so after p2's completion total free tape drivers that are left with me are six in number now total i have six tape drivers and i need p1 p1 needs four tape drivers to complete so allocate four drivers to p1 for its completion and when p1 completes it will return these four along with the three that were allocated to it that means it will return uh, all the seven tape drivers and now we are left with free tape drivers equal to seven all right mm, there is has to be a mistake Alright, so this was a sequence in which all the three processes got their required number of tape drivers and they completed their execution. So what was the sequence that was followed? I followed the sequence P3, P2 and P1. You could have also chosen the sequence P3. P3 would come at the beginning because it requires two tape drivers that were initially free. Then you can choose P1 before P2. So this state is a safe state and this state is not deadlocked because it is uh, it, the resources or the tape drivers are allocated in such a way or they are required in such a way by the different processes that we can meet the requirements of all the processes in one sequence or the other. So that's all for today's lecture. If you understood the question, please like and share this video. Subscribe to the channel of Easy Engineering Classes for more such tutorials. And please mention in the comment section below, how did you find the video? Thank you for watching. Stay tuned to our channel. Good luck.